So uh, I'm going to move the conversation on, and uh, I'm very pleased uh, to welcome uh, Letis Bromovsky, uh, who is, of course, uh, the political commentator and contributor to Young Voices UK. Hi, good evening. Hi, Nick. Thanks for having me on. Well, um, you uh, I don't know if you had to suffer my little rant earlier. I apologise for that <laughs> um, about expenses, but there you go. Now, look, uh, this has uh, got uh, many, many people listening to us this evening quite, uh, mm. uh, quite uh, opinionated about it, with a majority saying it should be cut. When I listen to stories like uh, Catherine's, where she's saying, actually, this has made a huge difference and why, which I suppose we shouldn't be surprised about, um, it's it's going to become quite a toxic political issue here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, um, I definitely think that it will become an issue. Like you said, removing £20 from someone's benefits is obviously going to have an impact on their life. Um, but what I think is that this uplift was there to address the impact of COVID. Um, and this is now changing. Um, and I think that the priority should now be to help people get back into work, um, you know, help reskill them, help boost our economy after COVID um, and really get everyone back into the workforce. Now, you see, that's exactly what I've been articulating as the alternative case. But when I did a little bit of uh, digging into this, or well, to be fair, I was pretty briefed up on the subject a part of the part of the issue is at the moment that even when people are getting back into work you're getting what's called in work poverty because they're earning money that still qualifies them because they're getting paid such a low rate or doing maybe only two or three days a week work that actually the state steps in and subsidizes the wage packet sometimes 100 pounds a week or whatever if you're if you're only earning say 250 pounds and you've got rent and rates isn't part of the answer to actually start increasing the wages of people on low play to lift them out of benefits even in work benefits entirely because at the moment People are going back to work and they're still getting benefits. They're still, in some sense, dependent on the state. Well, yes, definitely. Um, and earlier this year, in April, the government did um, increase the national living wage so that people did have that additional £350. But um, I think that the focus really here should be um, in these government schemes, you know, helping to push them forward. You have your National Skills Fund, which aims at giving all adults um, level three qualifications. And from there, the longer term of getting longer term work um, and boosting them economically. Um, if there's an inherent flaw in the benefit system, you know, that you don't believe that benefits are being um, given out appropriately, um, then this needs to be addressed through a proper government review um, and not just because of this £20 um, removal. You know, blanket uplifting of benefits um, isn't helping support these people. Instead, these additional funds um, should be focused uh, more specifically, figured out where best they should be spent or focus those on society who need them the most. Well, I, I think that's the case that perhaps Catherine would have made. I don't want to speak for her. I'll call her from Devon earlier on this particular subject because uh, I made the assumption uh, 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 that she can't actually work. So she doesn't have that option of going back into work. And yet she mm. will be swooped up into this de uh, this decision to, uh, to uh, if you like, cut uh, the £20 a week. Uh, so so the solution you're offering and suggesting of getting back into work doesn't work for her. Would you still, in her case, cut the £20 a week? Um, well, in that case, it would go back to the benefit system being um, completely reviewed, you know, and then if there are, you know, this, I believe that this £20 uplift should definitely be cut because um, it was only meant to be a COVID um, uplift for the pandemic, for those struggling for that. If there is other issues, you know, people who are living below the poverty line or can't find work, then that should be more of a focus of reviewing our entire benefit system and uh, refocusing um, on those in society who need it most because they can't work. And and isn't isn't that the bottom line at the moment? You see, I I think co I think the country and we're, we're all dancing around this. Uh, uh, any any COVID expenditure that's come in as temporary. It's going to be almost impossible for the government 
to row back and say, I'm going to keep this in place because there have yeah. been so many. They've cut furlough. Uh, they, they, they've cut support. They've cut grants. I mean, yeah. the, the point is, where do you stop? Uh, where do you draw the line? And, and I suppose if I turn this into a question uh, uh, for you, mm. how much of your answer is driven by a sense that we have spent huge amounts of money um, extra 200 billion, I think it is in total, or something, some extraordinary amount um, uh, on uh, on three. Actually, it's 380, I think, on the pandemic with this huge debt. How much of your answer is driven by the fact the government have got to take a stand and they have got to stop the flow of money out, or is that, or are you not a, a believer, if you like, in 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 f the the fiscal doctrine that spends don't spend more than you earn. <laughs> Um, no, that definitely um, plays a part in my answer. Um, you know, we do have this huge economic debt, which um, we are going to have to deal with and we're only just beginning to see now. Um, but another part of my answer is that we're finally seeing the opening up of re uh, restaurants, bars, you know, our hospitality sector. People are going back to the office. 88% um, of adults in the UK have now received their first dose of the vaccine. Um, so, you know, we're start finally seeing this change from COVID where we're finally coming out the other end of it. Um, and, you know, the government was very reactive in the pandemic when it occurred. Um, they, um, you know, gave this support to people, but they now have to be allowed to pull back a bit and refocus their spending to meet these changing needs of society. Um, yeah. There you go. That's the case for the cut. Well made there. Thank you very much to Letis Bromovsky, from uh, the uh, who's a political commentator and contributor to Young Voices UK, who I'm hearing more and more about. So, what's your view? You still.